set here it wouldn't be stand up comedy now, would it? How's Seth been doing tonight? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, well, as you heard, I'm Steven. Uh, gonna get up here and drunkenly tell some stories. That's what this is. <laughs> Has anyone ever been to uh, Northern Michigan? Anyone? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah uh, I don't go up there too often because uh, I'll get mistaken for a bear. <laughs> That place is just run with bears. I went up to uh, a friend's house for a uh, bachelor party. And I get up in the morning, you know, I'm walking downstairs and everything, wondering what I want for breakfast. And there is just this gigantic bear at the window, just looking in. And he sees me and he gets all excited. And I'm like, I don't know if he's excited because he's hungry or if he thinks he recognizes me. <laughs> like, he's like, oh, there goes Stevie, my third cousin. I wonder if he's coming to the family reunion. We got extra fish and honey. Like, I don't know what to do. And so I'm standing there and I'm like, I read on a blog somewhere that when you see a bear and a bear sees you, you're supposed to stand still. But I didn't feel like that's right. I feel like a bear wrote that. <laughs> like, I go, I go shopping and the bear is at the cash register and he's like, hey, if my crazy cousins are out there like fucking with you, uh, just play dead, just play dead. And he goes home that night and his cousin comes back just carrying me on his arm, I'm dead and everything. He's like, I got some dinner. The craziest thing, he just, stood still and let me kill him. Um, they seem to be doing this all of a sudden. I don't know why. The other bear just winks and says, like, here you go. <laughs> Back when I was a kid, I, uh, I used to have a pit bull. Her name was Queenie, and she was the sweetest girl that I had ever had. Just the most beautiful dog, just lovely and fun. But she loved to run away. And she would make this little game out of it where she'd want me to chase her down and everything. And, you know, I'd never want to, but I didn't want her to go to the dog pound and get killed. So that's what I would have to do. One time I'm walking her though, and uh, this was my first time learning that uh, dogs could have sex too. <laughs> uh, so she breaks off her leash and runs into the neighbor's yard. We have this fence. So I couldn't see where she went. She's on the other side of the fence. I don't go running after her, you know. I figure she's just over there running around. I'll get to her when I get there. And I get over there and I'm just appalled by what I see. She's down and this gigantic black Rottweiler is on top of her, just going to town. And he looks right at me, right in my eyes, and starts barking. And I knew in my soul, he just said, I'm fucking your bitch. <laughs> and ever since then, I was just like, no more female dogs. <laughs> Except I, I have another female dog, so I obviously didn't learn my lesson. Um, I'm broke. I'm broke these days. I start to sound like I'm a politician because I wind up owing everyone money and my one slogan catchphrase that I have to say to everyone is, the situation is under review, we're working on it, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. <laughs> In other words, I'm broke. Uh, I'm so broke that a friend of mine created a GoFundMe for me. <laughs> like, you know you're broke when your own friend takes pity on you and decides to ask the internet to give you money. That was just a, was just a bad time, a bad time in life. I was so broke that I had to start making my own uh, music and my own paintings. Like, I was the type of dude who you'd see at the subway station with an easel doing some painting. Um, I'm no Bob Ross, though. The difference is, it's still some happy little trees. They're more like some depressing, wilting, withering trees. A lot like my soul. <laughs> I think that's my time, so thank you. Have a good night. <laughs>